Hi everyone, today we're going to talk a bit about how uh, we can demonstrate searching and sorting algorithms using a deck of cards. And uh, in front of me I've got my deck of computer combat cards, uh, as you can see here. And I've got a shuffled pack in front of me. And we've also got on the screen a random card generator, which is populated with all the cards within the computer combat card deck. Um, it's arranged in a um, 2D array. Uh, I suppose it could have just been a, or a 2D list, it could have just been a list and we could have selected a random element from that list. Um, as you can see here, we're generating a random integer based on the random module that we've imported um, from zero to the length of all computers, which um, is our 2D array. And I think there are 32 cards, so zero to 32 and we run it and it's going to give us a random card and that random card is 14 summit olcf4 um, a supercomputer um, i believe it's um, designed by the u.s department of energy um, and we're going to show you how inefficient a standard linear search might be and what our other options are um, once we've sorted our deck. So here we are with our deck and we're looking for summit. Now in a linear search the way this is going to work is we're going to go through our deck which has already been randomly shuffled, we'll shuffle it again, and we'll see how many comparisons it takes in order to find um, this card. So the first card, uh, Nintendo Wii, is not, so we're going to put that to one side. Um, so that's our first card. IBM Personal Computer, uh, the BBC Micro is our third card, ZX Spectrum, nope, we're still looking, Commodore Amiga 500, um, Samsung Q1 Ultra, Blackberry Bold, Samsung Galaxy, Alienware Aero 51, Tianhe 2, and we've got to our target card, number 14, which is Summit OLCF4. Okay, so let's just see how many comparisons it took in order to find that card. So it took us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it took us eleven comparisons to find that card. Let me just make a note of that on a sheet of paper here. And then what I'm going to show you, that was a linear search going from uh, left to right if it was an array. And this is what it might look like if we were doing the same search um, in a sorted or a different actually search in a sorted um, deck or a sorted array. So these cards are sorted from 0, 0 all the way through to 1F, which is a hexadecimal value for 31. And let's go through and divide this up then. So we know that um, in a binary search, we always go to the middle of the deck. And the middle of the deck, if we check, if you're not familiar with hexadecimal, you can see the middle number between 0 and 31 is going to be 15 and a half, we'll round up to 16. So we're looking for card 1, 0 to start with, yeah? Um, assuming that we don't know, um, well, the computer doesn't know exactly where it is, and this divide and conquer method goes halfway. So first of all, we've got this card here. And the Nintendo Game Board, which is 1, 0. And the card number we're looking for is 1, 4. And the reason why I'm saying 1, 4 is because those values are given in hexadecimal, and the actual value in denary is 20. If you're not familiar with hexadecimal to denary conversion, we'll probably cover that in another tutorial. Um, but what we found here is 1, 0 is clearly less than 1, 4. Therefore, all of these cards, because the deck is sorted, can also be discarded. So we can get rid of all of these cards and we're left with half our deck. So we've essentially halved our problem set. And then we're going to go um, between 1, 0, um, which is um, card number 16, and 31. Uh, there are 15 cards between that, so we'll go 7 and a half or round it up to 8. So we'll look for card number 24, which in hex is 1, 8. Uh, which is here, the Manchester baby. Now, 1.8 is greater than 1.4. So therefore, we're going to get rid of all these cards here. 
because all of these cards um, are greater. And we're left with um, this deck once again. So now we're going in between, um, we've discarded um, the rest of those cards, and we're going between um, one zero, actually one zero we should have got rid of as well. In our previous one, we should have got rid of this because this was already less than. So if you imagine our first cut, that one had gone, and um, we're now left with all of these cards. Is that correct? Uh, no, that's not correct. We still have one zero. My bad. So <laughs> we're left here because all the cards that we've got remaining now are one zero, two, one seven. Um, and we're going to go halfway. So um, the values are between 16 and 23. So there's seven numbers between that. So we'll go three and a half or four. So we'll go to um, two zero um, or 20. Um, so actually, that is card number 14, which is a card we're looking for. So we'll go one, two, three, four. And we've landed at our actual card. And in this case, if you um, go back to our previous kind of divides and conquers, our pivots, we actually only um, halve the deck four times. We took our deck as it was, and we halved it, and we got left with this deck. And then we halved this again, and um, we got um, halfway, which was here, and then we halved what was remaining, and we found our target card here. So if you look at the number of comparisons, it was actually completed in only four comparisons compared to 11. So clearly, a binary search is more efficient if we want to visualize this on pen and paper, this is what it might look like. Um, if you've got a set of cards and they're numbered between zero and 31, and the target value um, was card number 14 in hexadecimal, which is card number 20, the way the computer can look for that using a binary search is first of all choosing the midpoint. So the midpoint between 0 and 31 in 32 cards is going to be um, card number 16. So we'll look at card number 16 to start with, which is in the middle. And because 16 is less than 20, essentially we discard all of these cards and we're left with cards 17 to 31. Now we've got essentially a gap of 14 and we can look at the mid value in between which is going to be 7. So 17 plus 7 is 24 so we'll look at the value 24 and 24 is greater than 20 therefore all the cards between 24 and 31 can be discarded. And we're left with cards 17 to 23. At this point, we've got a gap of six cards. So we'll go to the middle, which is the third card, and we reach card 20. So hopefully what you see there is that in this scenario, where you've got 32 cards and we were looking for card number 20, we managed to do it in only four comparisons. Um, the first one we divided by half and reached 16. The second time we divided by half and got 24. And the third one actually divided by half and reached 20. So actually it's only three comparisons. Compared to our linear search when we found it in 11 comparisons, you can see how much more efficient that is. Now, that leads us to our next point, which is how would we actually make our deck sorted? So to illustrate this, we might look at um, a few cards and look at different ways of sorting our cards. I hope that's been helpful and I hope you found um, using cards, whether they're the computer combat cards or whether they're just actually normal playing cards or piece of paper um, to sort your um, data helpful.
Um, it certainly helps in terms of um, practice if you're trying to sort between um, an unsourced and sorted array. I think being able to physically manipulate um, cards which are either numbered or alphabetical um, might help. Um, and it's just different ways of practicing. Um, with my students, I advise them to use piece of paper or cards in this case, um, and also to have a go um, on paper. Um, we might also look at um, some algorithms or programs um, that are already made. Um, and at A-level, um, those programs, the uh, students will have to program themselves. But still, um, I think physically manipulating something is a good idea. Um, these cards are available um, as a Creative Commons download and you can make them yourself. Or um, if you wish to, you can buy them as a deck, a physical deck at computercombatcards.com. I hope that was helpful um, and we'll see you next time.